So I'm very happy to have the first speaker here. It's Professor Ronald Jung. He's the head of the Division in Implantology at the Clinic for Reconstructive Dentistry here in Zurich. And he's definitely one of the most prominent figures in implant dentistry. Emma Autos, he's the president-elect of the EAO, European Association for Osseo Integration, a board member of the Osteology Foundation, and many more. And for three TRI, it's such a huge privilege to work with you, Ronnie, because of your experience and your passion to move dentistry forward. We have enjoyed our collaboration so much. Uh, we have worked together on this project from the very first ideas in your office four years ago. And it's just amazing to stand after four years here with you on the stage. So I'm very happy to welcome to the stage Professor Ronald Jung for his TRI talk with the topic The Future of Implant Restorations, A New Era of Personalized Dentistry. So welcome, Ronnie, and Thank we are looking me. forward to your Thank TRI you talk. Much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends from all over the world, today it's a special day. And I think today we do write history in implant prosthetics. And I'm very proud and honored to be part of this event today and part of a team because good ideas can only erase by really having a strong team, getting the best people together. And I think that's what happened here. And I'm very excited with you together that we have a, a look into the future of implant dentistry and to look into a new area of personalized dentistry, which is an area which will be of the, the main topic for the upcoming 10 to 15 years. I brought two patients with me. One of them is Naya. She's originally Thai. And the other one is David. He coming, he's obviously coming from the US, as you can easily see. So Naya, she's 23 years old. She's 42 kilograms. She is only 156 centimeters tall. And she's a smoker, works as a waitress in a restaurant. And she has lost her 216 about a year ago. On the other hand, David came. He's 29 years old, he's a strong boy, he's 127 kilograms heavy, he's more than two meters high, he comes from the US, his prime hobby is uh, being a football player, and he also lost 216. So we have two persons, two patients coming to your office, which differ so much in many aspects. They have one thing in common. They lost the same tooth, tooth number one, six. This is the clinical situation of Naya, and this is the clinical situation of David. Now, what did they receive? They received the same implant. Obviously, different conditions. Larger bone, more narrow bone, with some bone defects. But exactly, exactly the same implant, same diameter. And they also received the exact same crown made out of a titanium base and a lithium desilicate crown. So these two patients, they cannot be more different, but they received exactly the same treatment. Now the question is, what do we know about these titanium base abutments, and why do you get both the same abutment and the same crown in 2021, ladies and gentlemen? When we go a little bit into the mechanics of a bobbin and crowns, this is Miriam, also a patient of mine, which got a very extensive treatment. She had a horse accident, losing everything from one front tooth until number five. And she got also one single implant then at the position of the the first molar, the first molar has been orthodontally moved to the position of the second premolar. She was very happy, as you can see, but after five years, she was not that happy anymore because the crown was loose. She wanted to have everything in all ceramic, and I provided her their solution with an all ceramic abutment, which I like, my preferred abutment. But here, I had to face a complication. 
Now, based on these complications here, the industry and the clinicians have looked for solutions. And the solution at that time was the titanium-based abutment. By the idea of having a standardized component and then placing a CAD CAM crown or a CAD CAM abutment or whatever on top of it. With the idea, number one, to increase the mechanical stability also for the posterior area. And number two, to simplify the CAD CAM procedures due to standardized components. This was the overall idea. Now, today, they entered the market so heavily that in Switzerland, 68% of all abutments are going to be this titanium-based abutment. So they're really very strong. But what do we know about them? Now, as a clinician, I would like to know about the clinic performance. In the past, we said, at least I want to see five-year data before I'm going to use something. If we have no five-year data, zero. We do have in vitro studies, and we do have some ongoing clinical studies. Some of them, one-year results have been published. We have been part, as the University of Zurich, from the very beginning on. I would like to pick two of these first in vitro studies. The first one has been done together with the University of Geneva, with Irena Seiler, where we looked at narrow diameter implant, comparing the different abutments, but the main part was to have a control, which was a titanium abutment. And the test was then the new titanium-based abutment with a Syconia abutment on top. And the good news was at that time, point, yes, from a mechanical point of view, this, they do work, because they were not significantly different. So from a mechanical point of view, it does make sense. Now, we also need to look at it from an aspect, from a biological point of view. Alexis Ioannidis, from our clinic, he investigated during his time when he was in, in Greece, having a, an, a research scholarship there. He looked at the morphology of the interface between the titanium-based abutments and the cat cam crowns, which have been looted on top of each other. And he tried to simulate these in an in vitro environment by simulating five years of function. That means turbo cycling and loading. So here, this is a gap which we can see here between a CAD CAM crown and a titanium-based abutment before thermomechanical loading, where we have a, a nice, perfect gap in this situation. Now I'm going to show you how this looks like after five years of thermomechanical loading. You could see that in areas the gap is going to be increased. And when we magnify this, you're going to be a little bit shocked. That's what we see there at these magnifications. So the thermomechanical loading affected the cementation interface of one third of this studied abutment and crowns. And gaps were identified as a result of the loading process of the aging of the five years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when this would be my abutment, I don't want to have such a gap at the most sensible area. This is just in the area of the attachment, of the biologic width of our implants. So the conclusion out of the mechanical point of view, we have learned that, number one, the mean bending moments of restored titanium abutments was significantly higher compared to all tested ceramic reconstructions. So from a mechanical point of view, it does make sense. But we have also seen that titanium-based abutment increases the stability of ceramic abutments, but are not yet really investigated in terms of their biologic effect and the biologic risks. So based on this, we were very motivated to look more now into the biologic effect of these abutment crowns. What do we see there? We see here two different situations. One is solved with a force views to metal reconstruction, and the other one is a Syconia reconstruction. Now, we would like to go a little bit more into depth. So we investigated a variety of studies looking at the evidence of the biologic effect of different implant abutment components on clinical studies. And all of these studies have one thing in common, we got human histology. So that's kind of the most 
the best information we can get out of these studies. Looking at these studies, the first study is a study which has been performed by Sven Millemann, also a co-worker from the University of Zurich. And the aim was to clinically, radiographically, and histologically compare monolithic zirconia crowns with porcelain fused to metal crowns for a construction of single implants in the molar area. So we compared monolithic zirconia crowns to porcelain fused to metal crowns. And the interesting aspect was now not just from the clinical performance, what happens on a histological level. So we harvested human histology in the area of the biologic width. And here, for the first time, we could really have evidence that we have more inflammatory cells in this area between the infant shoulder and the, uh, and the crown when we use porous views to metal reconstruction compared to psychonia reconstructions. We have done other studies. And we came today to the conclusion that we can say psychonia abutments seem to be less affected by peri-implant soft tissue inflammation compared to titanium abutments. Now you might say, I knew that already because it looks better. But I was tired of listening to people telling me it looks good around psychonia abutments. I want to see data on that. And this is where we had the data. And clinically, there is less information around monolithic psychonia crowns compared to post views to metal crowns after six months of loading. So these are very strong data, revealing that we do have proven and measurable benefits using all ceramic reconstructions, also on the level of the implant side. So with these, we need to ask ourselves, what are the clinical problems today? With what are the deal things we deal with? Now more from a clinical perspective. Today's problem in implant prosthetics is, number one, that actually we have too many standard components. We basically have, I would say, around 15 types of implants, taking all implant companies for every patient worldwide. Again, this height or that height. We use the same type of truth. So we have very limited personalization. Number two, we have multiple components with multiple interfaces, which I don't like. I don't want to have that many interfaces. I want to have at least only one interface. I have very limited design flexibility based on what the titanium base abutment gives me as a, as a, as a starting point. We have a cementation in an area which is most sensitive regarding biologic risks regarding potentially bonding. Yet particularly clinically, we have seen quite some significant debonding effects, especially in bridge reconstruction using titanium-based abutments. We have also aesthetic disadvantages due to the titanium abutment. And we have obviously also more costs due to the additional components and the manual cementation by the dental technician or the dentist. So, we have not yet used the full potential of the digital implant restorations. On the one hand, we are very advanced on the level of the prosthetic reconstruction with milling, with 3D printing. But the connections to the implant are the same for the last 30 years. The approach was too mechanical, was too engineer-like. And now we need to think from a different perspective. And a different perspective is that I would like to have a more modern, a more personalized implant crown with a complete flexibility and with no gaps. We enter now the world of personalized dentistry. What is personalized dentistry? We know it from medicine. It's also called kind of precision or personalized medicine. Personalized dentistry is tailoring medical decisions, therapies, interventions and or products to the individual patients. That we don't use the same medication for everyone. That we learn from each patient's health status, from the patient's behavior, from his, just from his look, what we need to have. This is the future of dentistry and this is the future of medicine. And when we look at how a future workflow in personalized dentistry will look like, that starts 
today already, with an at-home diagnostics, patient, there are different applications available where the patient is able to provide us already with data before I have seen it for the first time. Then the next step is the data acquisition. Today, this still takes place within the practice, within the office. But the future will be that also this part will be taking place at home. So also the traveling aspects is significantly reduced. Then we move on with the diagnostic and the planning part. This is then true, the dentist part. The future dentist is much more into diagnostics than in mechanical aspects. That's what we will do much more. It will go, especially when we took a look at toothbone reconstruction, that the reconstruction will already be prepared beforehand, before the patient even arrives, also on the level of teeth. This is possible due to the fact that today we do have opportunities for a robotic execution. So basically the robot already knows what he will do, and therefore there is no impression needed, there is no temporary reconstruction needed, because we already have the device at the, uh, available at the time. And then at the end, we're able to provide a personalized prosthetic reconstruction on teeth, on the implants. And now today, we have now the unique opportunity to really talk about the first time about the personalized solution on implants. By this, I would like to declare my conflict of interest. So this was, as Sandra said, the collaboration and the development project between TRI and the University of Zurich, the Clinic of Reconstructive Dentistry, including patent development. But today we do write history in implant dentistry. We have for the first time a personalized implant crown interface with the advantages that I have no titanium-based abutment anymore, no cementation interface in the most difficult area, the biologic width. We have a direct screw retained, either 3D printed or CAD CAM implant reconstruction without any abutments. We have a complete flexibility regarding the design, the emergence profile and restorative materials. And we have the same connection for single and multiple reconstructions. So this is some feature, big step, talking now for me as an oral surgeon and as a prosthodontist. So now the question is, how does that look like in a workflow, in a clinical workflow? And thanks to the team at TRI, thanks to the team in Zurich, we made a video of my first matrix implant my first Matrix crown. And I'm very happy to share now this experience with you. At 3 p.m. That was such a standard situation, I was a little bit bored. So I wanted to do something different. I called Sandra and said, listen, let's make the first three uh, Matrix implant. So I provided this training procedure. I haven't made any diagnostics before. We took here the, uh, the matrix implant, inserted this. It was a straightforward indication, so no big headache. Placing the implant without any bone defect. Here, perfect conditions. Then I decided after the surgery, I would like to have an immediate loading because it's such a, a good situation. At that time, I decided this was not planned. Placed here the, um, the impression coping. We did then a intraoral scan. Everything ad hoc, nothing planned. And then, after the scan, I had another implant surgery. And the data went to our internal lab with Andrea Patrizzi. He had no diagnostics. Based on what he had, he designed this crown, which he milled out of PMMA, no cementation, nothing. So there's no gluing together. After my second implant surgery, at 4.30, I got the other crown and could screw it in. And here, this was 90 minutes later. <laughs> and <laughs> you can see, I was really, I was really pleased. Technical way to get to the ground. So, so much time. 
you have heard. This is really, I actually, at the beginning, I didn't know that you put it into the video. This is really something uh, which we will comment later on. Three months later, we didn't have any further impression. We just made then a, uh, a final crown here, very nicely performed by Andrea Patrizzi from The Shape. This is the occlusal view. Ideal situation, it cost me nothing for doing this. Excellent bone stability. And this is really, ladies and gentlemen, this is how I would like to have future dentistry. This has started here at the University of Zurich when we had our meeting once in my office. And now we move on now again back on stage. And our clinic has a long history of, of immediate loading together with Roland Clauser 2000, 2000, uh, from 2000, 2005. But it was, I was sick and tired of this long process. But doing immediate loading like this makes it really easy, and it's a lot of fun. And with this, we come back to Naya and David. I think today we do have the opportunity now to provide them tailored, customized, personalized solution for their individual situation. And with this, I would like to welcome you to the new area of personalized dentistry. And I'm very excited that we can do these steps together. And I'm looking forward to an exciting afternoon, to a lot of discussions. And with this, I would like to end with a big thank you to the team which was involved now from a scientific point of view and also from a clinical point of view with the uh, matrix system. This is Sven Müllemann, Jenny Jerpe, Mutlu Özcan, Alexis Ioannidis, Andrea Patrizzi, Kreif Serpala, and Erkan Evci. And with this, thank you very much to you here, to the people online. It's a great pleasure. And I'm happy to be part of this big step. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Ronnie, for this amazing talk. Here is a little, Another implant. A little uh, a big implant, yeah. Okay. It's like a big model. Thank you very much. It was really great. Thank you so much. We have received a lot of questions. I'm just going to pick uh, maybe uh, two of them, we got a lot of questions about the immediate treatment. Uh, where do you actually see the, the clinical benefits of the immediate treatment and if there is a long-term clinical difference, if you can treat the patients immediately like the patient we have just seen here in the, in the video? So we have to face the fact that, number one, immediate loading is a kind of a, a more difficult uh, uh, discipline, so to say. And it there some more risks, obviously, by having a, a, a kind of implant failures at the early stage. So you need to know exactly the limits uh, and the possibilities when you go this direction. There are studies which have proven that there is no difference in terms of long-term stability, neither on a, on a bony or a soft tissue level with immediate implants. In the aesthetic area, there are additional parameters to consider. This is mainly then the, uh, the uh, soft tissue aspects, and there it's again, when you do this, uh, this aspect, you need to uh, know exactly what are the, uh, which is the right case for doing this and which is not the right case. I think this is a, a very important topic, and I'm happy that this question I raised, because it shouldn't look kind of too easy. Here we have a mole situation, and also I took actually the crown out of the, uh, uh, out of the occlusal contact, because there is no, there's no need to do this. This is just... The, uh, the advantage is we have an ideal soft tissue emergence profile then. We, have not, we haven't done any further impression. We took the same impression as we did intraorally. Uh, intra we could use the, more or less the shape of the, uh, uh, of the provisional crown we had there and could transfer into this, the, the main definitive crown. Thank you. I have men mentioned um, this morning in the, in the world premiere presentation, I've announced the two in vitro study that uh, we have performed, one with the University in Munich with uh, Professor Daniel Edelhoff. We will have a presentation today. I've also uh, announced that we're doing an in vitro study uh, together. Some people have asked if there is already uh, some uh, comments about this study you can, you can make here. Yes, we can. I on purpose didn't present it here because my scope was more kind of uh, setting the stage for that. So we did perform uh, in partnership, I would say, with the University of Munich, uh, an in vitro study, which we can say so far that we really were able to prove what we wanted to see, 
that with the control that we behave in the same way. So this is really a, a, a very major result already, which was very encouraging for us also to go on with clinical studies, which we're also going to do a, a randomized controlled clinical yeah. study together, which will be performed then at the University of Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. So we, we are working really hard in order to get to a scientific level, which makes you feel strong in every indication. Great. We have many more questions. We will have some more time at the end. Thanks again so much, Ronnie. It's a huge pleasure for us to be working with you, and I'm looking forward to the next decade. I hope that we can... Uh, there is a lot of questions about will the implants in the future also be personalized, whatever. I think we're still young, you know, and we have some time to uh, develop uh, new stuff. Thanks a lot so much for you. Now I would like to invite Holger to the stage to announce the next speakers. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you.